Hello, my name is Ranajit Da, and I'm the managing editor of Thomson Reuters Legal Media Group, which includes Asian Legal Business Magazine. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Mr. K. Shanmugam SC, Singapore's Minister for Home Affairs and Minister for Law. To introduce him very briefly, Mr. Shanmugam has been the country's law minister since May 2008. In this role, Mr. Shanmugam has overseen changes to Singapore's legal profession in order to build a more vibrant legal sector. These have included reforming the arbitration regime in Singapore, encouraging international law practices to anchor regional work in Singapore, and facilitating collaboration between Singapore and international law practices. The Singapore International Commercial Court and the Singapore International Mediation Center were also established during his tenure as law minister. Prior to entering cabinet, Mr. Shanmugam was a senior partner and head of the litigation dispute resolution practice at Allen and Gledhill, then the largest firm in Singapore. He was in practice for more than 20 years and was appointed senior counsel in 1998. Uh, Mr. Shanmugam, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ranajit. Good to speak with you. Um, as we speak, the Singapore Convention Week just concluded. It spotlights, among other things, the Singapore Convention on Mediation, which was first signed about two years ago. As of now, there are about 55 signatories and seven countries have ratified it so far. So can I begin by asking, how would you describe the impact it has had so far? And also, what is Singapore doing to encourage more signatories? Ranjit, when you look at conventions like these, the impact has got to be assessed by a number of different factors. First, of course, the number of countries which have signed. Now, for a convention that was only open for signing two years ago, getting 55 countries to sign up, including the US and China, is very significant. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's not we who are getting them to sign up. It's not a, it's not a treaty uh, for Singapore. It's a UN treaty. Mm -hmm. It's multilateral, open platform. It's for parties to make an assessment for themselves. So we don't negotiate with countries and ask them to, hey, would you come and sign? I mean, we do encourage parties to sign, but it's not like, say, a Singapore-India treaty or Singapore-China treaty where, you know, it's between two countries. It's a UN convention. That's the first point. Uh, so the fact that 55 countries uh, saw it in their interest to sign up to this convention uh, is very significant. And it's already come into force with seven countries ratifying it. It came into force last year. Um, the third point is, what is this, when I say open platform and I say Singapore Convention, what is it that we mean? It's a convention where whoever becomes a party to it and whoever ratifies it, then undertakes that if two parties to a contract have written in a mediation agreement, then that mediation agreement can be enforced in the ratifying countries. So it makes mediation a very powerful tool. If I enter into a mediation agreement with you, settling matters, mediation settlement agreement, and if you don't pay up, I can go to a country where you have assets. And if that country is a, a treaty con convention party country, I can enforce. So that is the power. So the real uh, test of success is how many parties are signing up uh, and putting in the Singapore Convention on Mediation in the uh, agreements. Because when parties enter into a contract, and this means, you know, usually contracts entered into after the uh, treaty came into force, which is last year. So we're only talking about a few months now. Then are there uh, parties signing up contracts, investors, say people investing in a country, um, an American investing in American company investing in South Korea or China or vice versa, are they drafting into their contracts? If there is a dispute, we will mediate and you know be bound by the Singapore Convention on Mediation or something like that. We won't know because this is private, and obviously it's got to take some time. But by all accounts, getting uh, feedback from the different countries, getting feedback from commercial parties, they are very keen that uh, this be rolled out and more countries ratify. And we are encouraging that. Speaking of mediation, um, 
you know, obviously the last two years have been quite tumultuous um, and you know with the COVID-19 pandemic. So how, how do you feel that the pandemic has impacted the evolution of mediation as a dispute resolution method? And as the pandemic, hopefully, fingers crossed, recedes globally, how do you see the role mediation is playing going forward? The way I will put it is, people are now still in the midst of the pandemic. They're trying to sort out their uh, affairs from the business perspective. But uh, there has been a huge amount of disruption. We have all had disruptions to our lives, health, uh, social uh, compact, but businesses have been hugely impacted too. The, the supply chains, the ability to sell things, the ability to get uh, the things they want, the ability to manufacture, everything has been affected and it would have been extremely difficult for companies, business people to have uh, analyzed the risk to this level or that this will happen before COVID struck. What uh, this has brought home in a very powerful way is the idea that uh, everyone needs to be prepared for disruption. Disruption is real, it's going to happen, it could happen in the most unexpected uh, way. And uh, if your contract doesn't uh, is not drafted to cater for this, it's going to be very difficult. Catering in this context means dispute resolution because you know, you may not be able to supply to the person that you agree to supply, or you may not be able to supply at the price you agree to supply. You may not be able to get what you wanted at the price that you wanted, or you may not be able to get it at all, or you may not, the rules may prevent you from selling, or there is no shipment, you know, all kinds of issues. So you need clauses in that. If there is a problem, how do you resolve? And uh, Mediation is a key way of resolving disputes. So I think it will it will become a very important factor when people start drafting contracts here on. One of the things we've been following quite closely at, at Asian legal business is how Singapore has been making moves in the past few years to establish itself as a regional or even a global hub for different kinds of legal work, including dispute resolution. Um, I want to know from you, what in your opinion uh, does the dispute resolution hub of the future look like? And in what ways is Singapore working towards getting to that goal? Some things are fundamental, they aren't changing. And some things you need to uh, change with the times. What are the immutable, in my view, fundamentals that never change? One, a strong reputation for rule of law. People are not going to come and have their disputes resolved in your jurisdiction if you don't have a good reputation for rule of law. What does rule of law here mean? A good judicial system, a good legal system. Also, the sense that uh, you can come in and be safe and leave. Uh, and that uh, you know any money that you have is yours. Your personal safety, your financial safety, and the fact that you can have your disputes resolved in a proper way without uh, the agencies and the government interfering and the courts intervening. And if you have to go to court, that it will be resolved according to the merits rather than, you know, other factors. These are fundamental. There are many other aspects of rule of law, but I'll just say, so rule of law. Second, ease of communication. So you need to be able to get to a place and get out of the place quickly. Logistics, it sounds, uh, very administrative, but it is important. Three, it must have a sound legal infrastructure. You must be able to get the lawyers you want, either in the jurisdiction or the rules must allow, if it's an international dispute, to bring in lawyers of your choice to come and arbitrate or this mediate or do what you want. A good panel of mediators, a good panel of arbitrators, if necessary, to go to court. So we have a, a seamless uh, suite of uh, uh, sort of you know, institutions for mediation. There's a Singapore Convention. We are obviously a convention party. We have an international panel of mediators. We have strong institutions that deal with mediation. SIDRA, Singapore International Mediation Centers, SIMI. And uh, so we focus on that. And uh, international mediators can come to Singapore. International lawyers can come to Singapore. And uh, you can mediate. If mediation doesn't succeed, you can arbitrate. The Singapore International Arbitration Center is one of the top centers in the world, and Singapore is one of the top places in the world for arbitration. 
And again, uh, we allow lawyers from all over the world to come into Singapore to do arbitration cases. So people have the confidence. You can be from Ireland, you can be from South Africa, you can be from India. You have the confidence if you want it, you can bring any lawyer that you want to argue your case. Singapore provides a neutral value. And uh, so a good legal infrastructure, uh, availability of lawyers, good communications. You need to be able to communicate effectively. Tele by that, I mean internet and telecoms. Uh, everything is available. That's important. Again, administrative, but extremely important. Uh, neutrality. If people, Singapore is not a big country. It is neutral. It's seen as a very neutral venue when you have disputes between, uh, you know, in c countries and uh, companies. And uh, it's a place that people feel comfortable. Western com companies feel comfortable. Asian companies feel comfortable. So it's a good place to come in and uh, have your dispute resolved. So for a variety of factors, these are some. Singapore has had, uh, established a very strong reputation as the top center in Asia and one of the top three, four centers in the world. And many other disputes originate from outside of Singapore. Now, those are what I would call the immutable factors. You've got to provide all of this. But the COVID uh, pandemic has also shown us how some of the future pathways lie. Uh, people may not travel as much. They may, but they may also not travel as much. And uh, when you offer a dispute resolution as a center, what is it that you're offering? Are you offering a place? Are you offering a physical facility? Are you offering an idea? And frankly, I think it's got to be all of that. And the second part of my answer, the idea, an idea of mediating in Singapore, the idea of arbitrating in Singapore at a place in Singapore. You can be overseas, but what is it that Singapore offers for you if you were to mediate? I mean, you're sitting in Paris, somebody else is sitting in uh, Oklahoma and uh, they want to mediate in Singapore today. It's possible at the touch of a button. What is your product offering? How do you add value? I think those are critical questions and those are questions I won't say we have found the answers to all of them, but the quality of lawyering available, the quality of advice available, the neutrality, the way it's put together, the way the technology works, all of these are going to be extremely important. Speaking more broadly of the legal sector, what are some of the biggest challenges do you think it faces today? And what role is the Ministry of Law playing to help both lawyers as well as the users of legal services overcome some of these challenges. When you mean challenges, you mean challenges within Singapore? Right, yes. I think some of them are challenges everywhere else, but if you look at it from a Singapore perspective, what we are looking at is uh, how to continue to make sure that Singapore retains uh, a very strong position in the international legal scene. Uh, how does that uh, break down in terms of uh, the elements to it? We have to make sure that we continue to be welcoming of uh, a broad array of legal talent into Singapore while making sure that they are very strong Singapore law firms because people come to Singapore. They also want very strong Singapore law advice. So we need to make sure Singapore law firms, uh, lawyering in Singapore based on Singapore law is a uh, remains strong. So you've got to be a hub, but you also got to make sure that your local law firms are strong so that they are they provide they are able to provide the quality of advice that international clients require. Second, uh, how do you make sure that uh, in the context of the, uh, the evolution of technology, what, to what extent law can be routinized? To what extent can it be, uh, can AI, artificial intelligence, handle it? To what extent do you need a physical human being, a lawyer, be involved? These are challenges for lawyers, law firms, but my ministry is actively involved in working with the lawyers, upgrade their technology. Uh, clients are not going to pay very much for advice that they can uh, get from AI or which is fairly standard. 
they are looking for solutions they are looking for out of the box thinking which comes in addition to whatever technology can provide so how do we weave technology in and how do we have our lawyers trained so that they can uh, provide uh, the, that kind of advice over and on top of whatever technology provides and how can they compete with the international standard law firms so these are also, so i would say some of the challenges i want to end with a forward looking question so what are some of the the key dispute resolution initiatives that we may see from singapore over the next few years you look at it in three ways so in singapore what does an in, you know, what does a person coming into singapore get if they want to choose singapore as a dispute resolution center some people want to do mediation some people want to do arbitration some people want to do mediation and arbitration some people just want to go to courts now in asia the singapore courts have a very strong reputation and we have set up what we call the singapore international commercial court which can deal with disputes uh, between parties who may have uh, nothing to do with singapore so there are parties who say i don't want arbitration i prefer the my dispute to be resolved by court so, say an american in and a south korean a company or a chinese and an american company if they want to have it resolved in the courts the singapore international commercial court will handle it and the singapore international commercial court has got not just singapore judges but international judges people who have been sitting on the highest courts on the land former chief justices or former supreme court judges people of that quality or the uh, people who have been very senior uh, advocates if uh, they want to look at arbitration again uh, you know the singapore is ranked very high in the arbitration scene both singapore and singapore international arbitration center Uh, and Maxwell Chambers has a place to do arbitration in. We have to, as I said, uh, move uh, much more into the technology space in this uh, offering. We will continuously, we, are, we try to be at the forefront of uh, legal developments to make sure the legal framework is supported for arbitration when people come in. And that is why they choose Singapore. as a seat of arbitration as a place and Singapore International Arbitration Center is chosen uh, in mediation because it is a fairly new baby we need a lot more education so we work with Ancetral we do uh, uh, workshops for example the Singapore Convention week has just ended the mediation week and uh, we work with Ancetral uh, we do workshops for parties uh, people from other countries who need uh, you know who would like to understand mediation and they can be lawyers they can be administrators they come and uh, the mind share for mediation it increases and understanding of what the convention offers increases whether they then choose the convention is obviously something for them to decide but this is how we handle it You, you've got to keep looking at the future and uh, so the education and training of officials from around the world and uh, the mediation may not take place in Singapore it could be you know two South American parties handling it in you know, Brazil or Argentina but we still try and train people from all over the world whoever wants to come because there is no magic in this and uh, there is no secret in it the more people who understand this the better it is so that's our approach so we try and point out that there are merits to mediation there are merits to arbitration there are merits to court litigation so it's up to parties to decide but singapore as a neutral venue as a small country is able to uh, sort of present itself as a as a honest uh, place where you can do these things uh, thank you for your time mr shanmugam thank you ranajay pleasure